Hi, Ginger fans. Welcome back. So let's keep the ball rolling. Let's get to track two, which is Colossus. I've done the three singles so far. I've also done Call Me a Symbol. This is going to be Colossus. Without further ado, after three, two, one, go. Do you know what hit me the most about that one? It just felt so fun. You know, um, I think we've been talking a lot, or I've been talking a lot anyway, and you guys obviously we've got the dialogue going in the comments. Um, but about the darkness, you know, it's dark. I don't know, is it just me or did that feel kind of fun? There was something, um, it's obviously not lighthearted by any means, Um Unless my brain's completely askew at this point in my life, which is very possible. Um, but there was something playful about it, you know, um, especially dun, dun, ba -dum, ba -dum, da -da -da -dun, dun, that wee groove that came in there. Actually, getting kind of Pantera vibes. Actually, I mentioned Call Me a Symbol about the. Dun. I feel that, like that might be a Pantera song that I was thinking about. I still haven't, like, I just haven't had time to go and check out 
the Pantera albums again and, and see where it is. It might have been something off reinventing the steel. I could be completely off on that. But what I mean is the groovy aspect of this, um, and I wonder is it also possible, if you think about the actual construct of this band, they have the exact same setup as Pantera. One guitar, one bass, one singer, one drummer. That's not that common in metal, really, is it? Is it really? I mean, yeah, okay, you could comment, and there's, yeah, th- th- there are other bands that do that. But big, 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 big metal bands. Um, so th- th- there's that. There's something about the groove aspect of this. Um, also the fact that the song doesn't sound like it's missing anything. Some of you guys have been asking me about my intro. I really appreciate anybody taking the time to say, you know, that they've, they've enjoyed that. It means a lot. It's really, really nice. Um, I don't have that song available to download, but uh, I do have, you know, I write instrumental music and I do have a band as well, the band's channel. I don't have any stuff from the band on this channel. The band's called Diamere. It's not as heavy. It's not as heavy as this by any means. It's got proggy sort of elements to it. Um, but anyway, the instrumental stuff that I write, and I'll maybe just put a, a quick clip in here so you can, if you want to support the channel, you've got the buy me a coffee thing you know, and, you know, some people have been donating through that and that's really, really nice of you. But if you do want to support the channel, it's probably worth more to you if you go to my band camp, because if you're going to donate, then at least you get whatever music I've released for it. So it's a better exchange for you. You know, I really appreciate the tips no matter what. But if you're going to be passing over money, you might as well do it on Bandcamp because that way at least you get some music to listen to as well. So the reason why I was talking about that was when it comes to metal stuff, uh, quite a lot of the metal that I like has even more layers to it. Uh, synthesizers, electronic stuff, um, orchestral, all the rest of it. There's something really refreshing about this. It sounds so stripped back and yet it doesn't sound like it's missing anything. And for somebody that loves that deeply layered music, I think that's that's a big achievement to get a, to get me to enjoy it so much um without all that superfluous stuff i really shouldn't say superfluous because it's not superfluous i love that stuff and i write that stuff so it's not superfluous i like that but i am enjoying the fact that this sounds so stripped back and live and raw and it doesn't sound like it's missing anything so yeah anyway let's go back run this song through again and we'll do a little bit of a, a stop and chat for fans of curb you know what i'm talking about Yeah, that, that I wasn't expecting the singing to come in there. I was kind of expecting Call Me a Symbol, the way it's set up. So it's unexpected. So what's that? Song one. I know I've heard the three singles at this point, but, you know, everything from here on out and Wallflowers, I'm going to be doing one, two, I think Vortex is three, so I can't do that. So it'll be whatever comes after that, number four. So I'll be doing them in order. But it's interesting that I said on track one that <laughs> the first thing was, not that it's simple or straightforward by any means, but it kind of felt like a bit of a, right, out the door, go for it but not too much head scratching. A little bit more head scratching in this one. A little bit, but not completely the other end of the spectrum. So I wonder, you know, have they considered that maybe, possibly? You guys will know when you listen to the whole album, you know, have they staggered it so the intensity or the the complexity rises as, as the album goes on? Maybe I'm on to nothing anyway, but just going on what I've heard recently, Call Me a Symbol. This one, similar sort of vein as that song, but maybe just... An extra step of, of, of complex, complexity in it. It's easy for me to say not. Anyway, let's go on. Okay, so I'm not going to stop too much in this one. Um, Famous last words. That's the same sort of syncopated rhythm I was talking about in Call Me a Symbol. I noticed it a lot 
when, you know, when I was just listening to this song there for the first time, it's dum bum 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 bum. It's like a three against two. You know, the amount of um, piano lessons I've had teaching people three against two, starting it on you know, on their knees, doing three in the right hand, two in the left, and then switching it round and, and bringing out the levels and so on. You know, not everybody finds it easy to do that sort of polyrhythm. The drummers are going to get it. Don't forget, piano is a percussion instrument, so... Love that sort of thing. And when it comes to the bass and the guitars and the bass drum, you know, they're really, really pushing into that. That whole thing. There's something, a bit of a, you know, wasn't there a bit of a breakdown in Vortex? A bit before the band kind of ended up being sort of pulled out of the building in the Vortex, there was something there with a lot of slides, if I remember. Um, on the bass. That little part of the song reminds me of Vortex. Love the bass tone in this. Really, like, um, overdriven, biting. You know, really dirty sounding. Really love the drumming in that, you know, um, I, I don't know if I picked up on that so much that very, very first listen, but to hear how much he's, he's using the toms as part of that groove, um, you know, we'll run that tiny little section back again, listen to the tom work in there. I think that's what's happening there. Loving those open guitar down. Wow. You know, several notes all at once. Those big open guitar strums. There's a real clarity in the voicing despite all of the overdrive. So really love the guitar tone in this. Tatiana's vocals, let's really pay a bit more attention to her vocal line in here. Yeah, so I really love that. I think that's the chorus, sir, I would, I would say. You know, it sounds like one. Um, clean singing. That's like a question and answer with the clean and the screaming, clean and screaming. That would be class live, you know, she's sort of back and forward in that there. Okay, this is this little sort of cool kind of groove that came up that kind of put a smile on my face. I feel like I've had a cup of coffee since I started listening to this. Really get me going. So it sounds like dum ba da dum ba dum ba da da dum ba. You know, as if the the snare is off. One and two, and two, and one and two, and. Vlad doesn't help a situation because, you know, if it is, then he's doing that Lars Ulrich thing of putting the symbol on the second beat. Like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That sounds like what's happening there. Rise my carcass flow, rise my stone Is there a better scream over a blast beat? Ah, love it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know how, ma how many of you guys think that's beautiful. That's beauty to me. Like, I love that. Okay. 
So in that wee bit there, we're not getting the, the tuplets I was talking about. Like, sounds more like, isn't it? It's a, it's a demi semi quivers. La 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 la. That's for fast notes. Ah, the scream, the scream. There's that polyrhythm. Dum, bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, dum, bum, ba. It's pervasive. It's, it's, it's happening other times I'm not even mentioning, but it, it seems like the dominant thing there. Loving the double kick on this as well. Like big, 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 big breakdown kind of groove here. Also quickly mention that ride symbol. Do you notice how I love the way he's getting that different tone shift there moving? It's not just he's you know he's really playing about with the bell. Um that's what she said. Kind of da -da 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 -da. That's the stuff I was talking about. Pantera. There's something. There's something stylistically similar. You know, the, the the overall sound of the band doesn't sound anything. The production and stuff's completely different to Pantera. This sounds far more gritty and raw than that sort of polished kind of sound that Pantera had. Certainly later on, anyway. Like um, on something like reinventing the steel. You know, um, Southern Tranquil had a, had a, a you know maybe something off that. I love the way they started that album. I didn't even know who Pantera was. It's still a schoolboy. It's probably like 12 or something. And seeing that in the library, seeing the CD of the snake, I was like, oh, it looks cool. Literally press play. I was just like, what? <laughs> anyway. Vlad always playing about with a crash symbol in the background there. I've talked before about my ears being drawn to that, you know, so much everything else going on. He loves to get that syncopated thing going on there with a crash in the back. Could actually be open an open hi-hat that, you know, like the, the double open hi-hat thing. Could be. The tone of it doesn't sound like a big big symbol by any means. Loving the double notes and all those da dum ba dum ba dum. Some of them are like threes, but the show you know when she's singing over that, the the the, the kick and the guitar and the, you know and the bass again all locked together. Da dun da dun da dun da da. You know they're kind of like um, Akia Kachura's grace notes. Are those tiny tiny notes with a little line through them? Da 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 da. -da. Sometimes they're on the beat, sometimes they're ahead of the beat, but it sounds like ornamentation, doesn't it? Grand false they always leave me wanting more, like, every single time. Ooh. Can't wait for track four. Let's keep it moving. See you next time.